Hey YouTube, Wooden Real here with another awesome video. And welcome back to another episode of TGIF Talks. On today's episode, we'll be talking about The Legend of the Bionicle. Now, my history with Bionicle goes all the way back to, I guess, 2001, when the first series came out. Uh, the actual first two Bionicles I got were uh, Kopaka and Anua. So, for a while I had those guys, and it was back when I actually had no idea what the story was about, but I just kind of thought they were cool. And I, I remember they were kind of like my, they were basically my favorite, like, toys at the time. And I mean, they are awesome, and I, I remember, like, playing with them all the time, and they were great. And eventually, um, I remember going to the store, going to Toys R Us with my mom, and we ended up buying like the rest of the series all like together. Me, my mom, and my brother, and it, it was great. Like me and my brother set it up on our like kitchen table, and we like built them all. And uh, well, I didn't really build much of them back then, just because I didn't really, I wasn't good with that kind of stuff. I think because I was still pretty young. But my brother built a lot of them, and my mom helped, and it was great. Like we, uh, like it, it, we had all these like different stories that we would come up with and things like that, and. Um, it, I still, I never, I didn't really know about the story that much, so we kind of just came up with our own thing, and, you know, we'd use them to battle each other and stuff, so, it, it was really cool, and, I mean, that was sort of my first introduction to the Bionicle world, which was just the toy itself, which, I guess for most people, that's pretty much how they get introduced to it. Uh, yeah. So, I never ended up getting the Toad Nuva, but I remember having, like, a like one of the booklets there, like the instruction booklets for a Rakshi, which I did end up getting one Rakshi, which was the, uh, the, uh, Stone Rakshi. Uh, I don't know its specific names, because a lot of those names were very similar, like for the Bulrock and the Rakshi, and like the, the Vaki, they all kind of had similar names, so it's hard to remember those ones, opposed to like the ones that ended up having personalities in the future, like the Paraka or whatever. But, um, uh, yeah, I had a booklet and it had all the Toa Nuva in it. I remember like really wanting to get them, but it was at a time where they kind of didn't really have them anymore, and it was sort of switching over to the Metru era. But um, I, I remember like cutting, like drawing them on pictures and cutting them out and like coloring them and stuff, and that's what I did with those series. So I, I was really like into that, and I uh, I'd go on like the playground at school and stuff and pretend to be like. Uh, the Toa with a couple of my friends, and it was a lot of fun, and that's when I did actually start, like, looking into, like, uh, I think, I think what ended up, what really got me into the Toa Nuva was when the, I first saw, like, the first movie, uh, The Mask of Flight. Um, I, it was my cousin that gave it to me, or he told me about it, and I went to go rent it at a video store or something, and, on VHS, so that was crazy. <laughs> that's a long time ago. But, um, yeah, I rented it, and that's what got me, like, super crazy about the Toa Nuva, but, like, like I said, they didn't really sell them anymore at this point, but, um, what they did get me into was wanting to get the next series, which was the Metru, and I think, uh, the Metru series, like, that, like, group of heroes ended up being, like, I think my favorite sort of grouping, mostly because I think I spent the most time, like, with it, and... This is when I really started getting into the series and, like, started, like, picking up the books and, like, reading through those, and, um, then, like, the the next movie came out, and, uh, like, Legends of Metro Nui and, uh, uh, Web of Shadow, like, when those movies came out, like, <laughs> I, like, watched those things over and over again, like, I freaking love those ones, like, they were the best, and, it pretty much opened my mind to, like, this entire, like, Bionicle universe, and that's when I really started to, like, get into the story and learn all their names and all these sorts of things, and, like, I think, uh, <laughs> to this day, like, it's some of my favorite movies, even though looking back on it now, they're, like, you know, they see they're a little bit cheesy, but, you know, they have, like, a lot of heart to them, you know, it's, it's six people, six characters, heroes, like, trying to, like, sh you know, save people and do their best and 
they all have flaws and they don't really believe in themselves, but in the end they triumph and they all become a team and even though like they have differences, they all become really good friends and it's really great and it, the cool part about that is that you see them become like you, you've seen them as the Taraga and then now it's like this sort of this is them now like in the past and when they were young and I, I, it's really cool and uh, I, I like it a lot and I think that's my favorite uh, series. Well, at least it's it's up there. I have another contender for it, but we'll get to that eventually. Uh, but, um, yeah. I think one of my favorite sets from the Metru era was uh, uh, Lee Khan and uh, the uh, Kikinalo. Like, I, I remember finding that, like, at, like, a Sears or something in, like, the upstairs toy department, and, like, I remember just being like, this is crazy, like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen, like, it's another Toa outside of the set, and he was riding a Kikinalo, like, in the movies, like, they made that, and it was so crazy, and, like, I wanted it at the incident I saw it, and, like, I had to wait all the way to Chris till Christmas to get it, and when I opened it up, I was just, it was, like, the best thing in the world, and, like, oh, man, Tolly Khan is awesome, and his, like, whole team of, like, his, like, eight... Toa, who, like, originally came to Metro Nui and, like, tried to protect the the city and were all meet, all eliminated. Like, I, I wish they would have gone back and, like, wrote, like, if uh, uh, Greg Farstein would have um, written a story about uh, that team and how that went. Or, like, if they just made a set about it, like, that would have been awesome. Like, uh, I mean, Nadiki before he went all, like, uh, spider scorpion like like that would have been so cool uh, man now it was around the Hordika time when um, I started taking my bionicles apart and making my own bionicles making my custom bionicles which is um, kind of one of my channels like namestakes is is um, my my mock slideshows but um, I remember my cousin came over and I had like all of them set up, the ones that I had, and he said to me, hey, why don't we take these and make our own? And I was like, huh, that's actually really cool. And so we, that's the start of me just like, you know, just, uh, um, like cannibalizing all my bionicles and making like my own ones. And this was when like I really started to like, it, like, enjoy making my own stories and coming up with my own like uh characters and i think like that's what st that's what really like inspires me to like do my work on this comic that i'm working on and stuff like that because um bionicle sort of introduced me to like all these different sort of characters and the possibilities of making my own toys like my own like figurines that i can like you know play around with and come up with their own backstory and their own things and corks and stuff. So, yeah. So the year was 2006, and uh, I had um, the day off of school. It was like a, I don't know, a ped day or something. And I went to work with my mom. And at this point, I didn't really use a computer that much because I don't know. It just wasn't really around that time where like I was more into like my toys and stuff, like bionicles or whatever. Of course, <laughs> but, um, so whenever I would go to work with my mom, I would, like, sit and play on the computer there and, like, search up stuff, and at this point it was, like, I would search up stuff on YTV.com or, I don't know, uh, or Bionicle.com, uh, but, so this particular day, um, I'm sitting in, in my mom's desk chair and she's off doing something in, like, another part of, like, her work area, work place, and I'm, like, uh, I decided, okay, I'll check out what's going on at Bionicle.com. And so I check it out, and there's, like, a fence, and there's a rainstorm, and it's all, you got all American rejects playing in the background, and then a video of these brand new, like, heroes that we've never seen before breaking through a fence, and it blew my freaking mind. Like, I could not freaking believe that. Like, I think I was, like, I guess... 11 or, or 12 at the time, but like, it was like the craziest thing I've ever seen, and, no wait, oh, I think I might have been younger than that, but 
regardless, it, it was like the coolest thing ever. And like learning about all their stories and these new like Toa. And it turns out that they weren't like completely new character they were characters, they were actually Matoran from like the old school like generation. And like it was the coolest thing ever and it was so like dark and gritty and like I really like that sort of like um, era of Bionicle just because it seems so like modern and new and like cool and I guess that's what they were trying to go for was just to appeal to like this sort of audience but it, it was awesome and like I think um, it, it, it contends with like Metru like the, the Toa Metru as like my favorite team of Toa just because it, it was so cool and it felt like um, us watching like these all these different heroes all these years like like the, the way they act and like the way they do heroic things and then finally it felt like this team was sort of like like us as the viewer or as the fans like becoming Toa as well because they were like I remember okay uh, Katangu or not Katangu fuck uh, Kongu Sorry, Katangu is the guy from. He's a big yellow guy. But anyways, um, Kitangu, he aspires to be like like he he's the leader of like the Goku Bird Force back in like uh, Ma, like the island Matanui days, and so he's like experienced leader. But he decides, hey, I'm just gonna like let, sit back and I'll let you all be the leader because he's the Toa Fire and the Toa Fire is usually always the leader, and like he he decides he wants to be like. Matau or be like a uh, Liwa and kind of be the jokester and kind of keep people like you know smiling even in those dark times so and like he aspires to be like them and it feels like me as like I feel like that's like they're sort of our surrogates as like the um or our avatars of of the Bionicle universe and it, that's what I really liked about it and I thought it was so cool okay the Paraka uh, natives of the Skakti race, they have to be, like, one of the coolest bad guys to ever come out of Bionicle. I mean, there's some pretty high contenders, like, of course, Makuta, he's, like, well, I guess he's basically the, the, the end-all coolest bad guy, but as a team, or as, like, a set of, like, opposing characters, like, I think the Paraka were, like, the top of the badass chain of, like, all of Bionicle, like, I think the Rakshi come close, and... I don't know, like, they, they were just so cool, and they all had their own personalities. They, they were, like, the first, like, grouping of bad guys to actually have, like, not just a drone, like, demeanor, or, like, not really have, like, a, like, a face to put towards them. Like, these guys, they all had their own little quirks and their own little things, and what was super awesome was that, uh, Zaktan, the, uh, he was, like, a Skakti of air, was the uh, leader of the team, and I, like, I thought that was awesome because, well, you'll find out later in the video that air is, you know, one of my favorite elements in the series. But I just think it was so cool, and they're like, to me, they're just like the the best. Like they were the best uh, villains or team of villains in the series because they all seem like sort of the complete opposite of the Toa. And like, if you read the books, like they kind of start out as sort of. Um, uh, they, they, they show up on this new island of Voyanui, and, like, all the Matoran there think they're Toa, and they pretend to be Toa, and, like, they're, they do all this sort of, like, um, these sort of things, and, like, the, the Matoran start thinking, like, these guys don't really seem very Toa, but none of them have actually seen a Toa, so they just assume that, you know, these tall, powerful guys that wash up on, on shore are Toa. And up until this point, this is how we thought they were. And, like, I think the, the Paraka were released before the Toa, so, I think that's what, like, this sort of era of Bionicle was going for, was sort of, like, a kind of misleading. Like, in the trailers of, like, the Anika, you thought that they were the bad guys because they were, like, breaking out of jail or something. And, and like, the good guys were pretending to be... Or the bad guys were pretending to be the good guys. And it's all very sort of, like... If you read Marvel comics, it's sort of like Dark Reign, where, like, the hero, the villains become the, the people that run, like, things. And, and, like, all the heroes are on the run, so... That's what this sort of feels like, and it's such, such a really cool, like, gritty concept of, like, a backward sort of, um, world, and I, th I really liked it, and, and, yeah, it, it's awesome, so. So, up until this point, I had gotten pretty much all, like, the Toa from every series, except, uh, the Toa Nuva, the Toa Nuva, of course, but 
I did, um, as far as villains go, I would always maybe get like half of them, like three of them, or I don't know. I think for the Paraka, I got, um, I, the only ones I didn't get was, uh, Hakin and Vizan, or Vizok, sorry. Um, but I guess there it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter because they're kind of like clones of each other or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I, I, and so when the Toomari were introduced, like, this is kind of a point where I sort of fall out of Bionicle, just because, I don't know, like, I, I got, I remember getting the Baraki, like, I thought the Baraki were really cool, but I, I think, actually, no, I only got one Baraki, I got, uh, Elik, and I also, for the Toomari, I got, uh, Holly, and, um, Kongu and uh, Matoru, but I at this point like I started to fall out of like Bionicle a little bit, and it kind of just I I don't know I I didn't get the whole series for some reason I I guess I was maybe starting to get more interested in other things like maybe video games or something like that, but yeah, and I sort of fell out. And g looking back on it now, there's a lot of like um, like sets that came out around that time that I kind of really wish I would have gotten, like Hydrox, Hydraxon looks so cool, and, um, I can't remember his name, but the, the, um, the one with the red mask that Makuta takes over, like, I thought he was so, so cool, and, like, I kind of wish I got him, and, um, I, to be honest, I wish I would have gotten all of the, the sets from the Toa Mari era. I, I feel like there's a lot of, like, people that put that sort of era down, but, you know, I really liked it. I thought it was so cool, and the concept of, like, them becoming sort of... They're sort of like an underwater, like, scuba team or whatever, but I, I thought it was so cool, and, like, looking back on it now, like, I definitely would have gotten everything, but I guess it was just the times, you know, and I'm sure, like, I'm not the only one that sort of fell out of Bionicle at that point, and I guess, yeah, it, it just kind of sucks, and I think, um situations like that were kind of what led to the end of Bionicle, which, um, was definitely very, like, upsetting when that actually happened, but, yeah, um, yeah. So then, after sort of a hiatus on Bionicle for me, the, uh, new series was announced, the 2008 Fantoka series. Now, like, I used to get, um, the, uh, Lego magazine, like, every couple of months or whatever, however, I don't really remember, it seemed like they just sent it out really sporadic, I didn't actually know, like, when I would get it, it would just come in the mail one day, and so, I got, like, the, an issue of it, and, like, I opened it up, and I'm like, oh, and it had been a long time since I've done any, like, look, like, since I've gotten any Lego stuff, or even looked at my Bionicles, and so I'm looking through this book, and there, the, there is the new series, like, the Fantoka, and they're all, like, in the silhouette sort of, like, image, and I'm like, what the hell, this looks so cool, like, it was... It was freaking awesome, and, like, I was so excited for it to come out. And, like, inevitably it does come out, and they're, like, fighting, like, um, bat creatures with, like, like, skeletal, like, cages that shoot out, like, I don't know, uh, leech things, and it, it was awesome. And, like, I didn't know that it was, like, them bringing back, like, the Toa Nuva until, like, like, later on. Like, they sort of hid that for a bit, but then, like, they came back, and it was, like, the new Vara back, this is crazy, and, like, it was, I guess it was sort of their attempt to sort of, like, bring back that old audience was to say, like, look, these guys are back, and, and, I guess, you know, it did kind of work, because I, I ended up getting a lot of the series, so what I did, I, I got, like, uh, pretty much all the Fantoka, um, except, actually, no, I didn't get Pohatu, but I got, like, um, Kopaka and Liwa, and I even got their Matorns, and I got, uh, Antros, but, um, yeah, I didn't end up getting the other ones, so, I, I don't know, I think it was just, it's it, same, same situation for, like, the Toomari, where, like, I, it kind of burnt hot, and it just kind of went out fast, and, like, I want, I got the series, and I was like, this is really cool, but I just didn't end up getting the other ones, and then the Mystica were announced, and I pretty much, like, didn't get any of the Mystica, like, I don't, to this day, I don't have any of, like, those, like, uh, like, those, um, three bad guys, like, the three Makuta and, like, the three Toa that came out, I didn't get any of them, but, I mean, looking back now, I totally would have gotten them, because they actually did look kind of cool, like, they definitely seem like 
Bionicle had like a boner for silver back in that area, but I did it did seem really cool. So, um, but uh, yeah, I thought that they like the fact that they had um, he like three heroes and three villains released, like like they separated the team. I thought that was really cool how they did that. So you kind of got like half and half first, and then the other half next. And I thought like. I, that that was really cool, and the 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 ones the fact that the ones in the swamp were all like bug and and, and like um, insect inspired, and the other ones were sort of bat inspired. Really cool, and I I think that it's very like Makuta, and I guess up until this point there wasn't really like you never saw any other Makuta besides like Teradax, which was the Makuta for like the longest time, and like the fact that there were more of them, and the fact that up until this point, they were only fighting one, and now they got to fight six, and even then they were, like, having a lot of trouble to trying to beat them, so... This was sort of, like, a ridiculous, like, alright, so either they have to be really strong now, or they're gonna get totally, you know, fucked over by this, but... No, like, they, they, they pulled through, and all the Makuta ended up dying, and that was it. Um, so, after... The, um, I guess the fall of the Matoran universe, there was, like, we, we basically leave it, and we, like, we find out that it was a giant robot, and that was crazy, and it kind of, like, takes my whole, like, image of what Bionicle was, and just, like, throws it on its, like, head, because it's, like, it explains why everything was underground, and it was, like, what the hell, like, how is Void, like, how do they have to go underground to get to, like, like, why is Metronui underneath Matanui, and, like, it turns out they were on some sort of, like, um, like, water moon of, like, an even bigger planet, and that they were just in some giant robot, and this is kind of where, like, Bionicle sort of gets, I don't know, I didn't really like what they did as much with this sort of, because to me it seemed like it had this mystical world of, like, bio, uh, mechanical creatures, and then they turn it into just, like, oh, well, they were made to, like, do this specific purpose, and it kind of took away the magic of it, because it was just, like, they're, like, the Matoran are, they have to keep this giant robot going while he goes around the universe, like, recording shit, and then the Makuta are actually just a virus, and, like, they're, like, just, like, a, like, they're, they're not, like, this evil, they're kind of just, like, they're keeping this big machine from working, and the Toa are, you know, like, it, it took away from the series. Like, it, feel, it felt like everything that happened up until this point didn't really matter. Like, the squabbles between, like, the Brotherhood and, like, uh, the um, Shadowed One's crew and, like, um, the Toei. Like, it felt like it didn't really matter as much because it was just, like, some robot. Like, it wasn't, like, a universe. They were just created to do this specific purpose. And I don't know. It, it definitely, like was lame, but, you know what, the Glatorians were cool when they first came out, because they were like another planet, so they were definitely like, they looked very alien, which they, if they that's what they were going for, then they succeeded, and it was really cool, like I got like the first set of, um, it seems like every generation up in, from like, like I, it's, I've gotten like every second generation pretty much, but yeah, they, they introduced that first set of Glatorians, and I pretty much got them all, but, yeah, I don't know, uh, the, it, the story kind of just, I just didn't really like it, like, I, I, at first, like, it just felt too much of, like, a change, and they just didn't even, like, like, Matanui, which was, like, basically God, were, is now, like, just a normal guy, and we're, like, following him around, and he doesn't know what the hell he's doing, he's trying to be, like, he's saying, like, Toa's, and, like, the Glatorians don't know what the hell a Toa is, and, and it, it just seemed really weird, and, you know, like, I, I like the Glatorians now that I've, like, I had time to, like, really look into their thing, and now that the whole story, like, came to a conclusion, and it was, like, uh, I imagine now, like, it's, they're living on, like, a world where it's, like, Matoran and Agori, like, living hand in hand, and it's, like, and that's cool, and, uh, I just... I don't know. 
I just miss like the original sort of like uh, like Bionicle like Matorian universe, which is really weird that it's like it was a whole other thing. But I know it happened, and you know there's nothing we can really do about that. So, so the final battle was a slugfest between two giant like robots on the barren planet of, of Barra Magna and you know it, it was like really cool and I guess they had the shoehorn in that sort of final story because like Bionicle was coming to an end around this time and you know it, it would have been really cool if they would have went to like the jungle planet like they apparently they had like dinosaur uh, Bionicle's plan for that and that would have been freaking cool because you know like I, I really like the Kikinalo and like if it would if all the sets would have looked like that that would have been so cool like so so cool but they ended up doing that. They scrapped that, and they ended up just having, you know, everyone come to Barra Magna, and, like, they joined the planet together, and it actually did seem really cool, and this is kind of what made me sort of, like, 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 the world again, was that now it's this whole new thing, like, all the people from the Torn universe, like, migrated to this new area, and they all have to live together, and I thought, like, if they would have continued with that story, they would have had, like, um new sort of like they would have had new metro Nui or or like like another island that they created where it would be all like kind of like new york you know and it would be a, a more like metropolitan area and they would have had like maybe new voya Nui or things like that and i think that would have been really cool and it would have been like all the uh agori and matoran mixed and maybe a new villain would have been like like the skok t or something but uh you know, they, it didn't end up happening, and it ended in 2010, so it was lame, and uh, then, yeah, so it sucked. But, you know what, it had a very good run, and, you know, uh, I'm still loving Bionicle to this day, and it's great, so. So, flash five years into the future, and now we have a brand new Bionicle planned, and so far, the sets look freaking awesome, and I'm so excited, and I'm so happy that Bionicle's back. Like, this is the best news I've heard in, like, a long time, and it's so great. Like, the fans demanded it, and, you know, maybe, like, by Lego didn't think of... The, like, maybe the fans, like, insisting it to come back might not have been, like, what really brought it back, but maybe it was, and who knows? Who knows what actually made them decide, hey, you know what, let's bring back Bionicle. But they did it, and it's coming back, and it's almost here. And I am so excited for Bionicle 2015. Now, it seems like they're going to be doing sort of like a reboot of the series, which is really interesting, because, you know, now they can, like, start back from the beginning and sort of, like, maybe they'll, like, take the universe and keep that sort of, like, mystery to it and that sort of, like, intrigue that they had at the beginning. Like, uh, I rem like, I said that, I was really disappointed about the, um, like, the way they made it sort of seem like the Matoran University. Like, it, it, it seemed like it was all for nothing, but maybe now they, they can change that, which is great, and then they can keep that sort of mystery and that sort of, uh, that awesomeness that they had at the beginning, and hopefully, like, that's what they'll do, and, um, like, I got a lot of, I got a lot of, like, high hopes for this series, and, you know, it's looking really good so far, and, you know what, by the... Like, I wasn't super stoked about Hero Factory when it first came out, but I didn't end up really getting... Like, I, I think in my collection of, like, stuff, I have maybe, like, four or five, like, Hero Factory figures that I maybe just got periodically just to see what, you know, what they were doing with it. And I actually did really, like... Like, I really liked their sort of um, skeleton system or whatever where they have all the armor put onto it. Like, I thought that was actually... I, like, I think that's really cool, and I'm super glad that that actually, like, is carried over to, like, the new Bionicle, because, you know, it, it seems like the in, like, Bionicle past, like, it, they always talk about Toa armor, and, like, how, you know, they've got Toa armor now, like, the Matoran have Toa armor now, and now they're Toa. And, like, it seemed like the armor pieces were maybe just, like, that shoulder pieces and maybe a chest piece or you know, thigh pieces or whatever, but now it's actually, like, their entire, like, armor set is, like, Toa armor, and that's really freaking awesome, like, it feels legit now, opposed to, like, it just being a part of their body or whatever, so you can actually, like, take off their armor and stuff, so that that's super cool, and I think that's really interesting.
Now, I was never really a big fan of, like, the gear system, because I found it always got in the way of, like, you like, trying to, like, play with it or whatever, and so that's why I really do like, like, the Anika build, because I, I, I just like them having, like, the points of articulation, like, I sooner that than, like, getting gears in the way, but what's so cool about, like, the new series coming out is that they found, like, a perfect balance, like, a yin and a yang of, like, the gear system and keeping all that articulation into it, and... I'm freaking, like, I'm so excited to get those in hand, because that looks so cool, and it, like, adds a lot to their, like, actual, you know, build, and it looks so, like, they actually look imposing and stuff, and I'm, I'm happy that that's sort of brought back, so it kind of, they've appeased, like, the fans of, of, like, the gear system from way back in the day, and they've also appeased the fans of who, who, like, the, the, a lot of articulation in their, in their Bionicle figures, so I think that's super cool, and they're doing great with that. Now, the revamp of a lot of their looks, um, I'm pretty excited about it. Like, they, they all look really cool. I think right now my, like, favorite looks of of them so far is, um, I really like the look of uh, Tahu. He looks awesome. And I love the look of Gali. Like, there's, they really, like, made her look awesome. And, like, they kind of have a feminine sort of look to her. So that's good, too, which I don't think, <laughs> especially the last Gali to come out, like, in the, in the Mystico of like era they like that did not look feminine whatsoever uh they actually probably could have switched um uh anua and gali mystica and then that would actually look better as far as like builds go for each figure but i digress about that that's in the past we don't have to think about that because i don't that's just that's old bionicle now like that's old news like we can appreciate it it's there but now we gotta look to the future to the what's gonna happen now so um, I'm, I'm, my favorite still is, like, like, I like Liwa, and his new build looks really cool. I'm not, like, sold on his mask yet, because it kind of looks a little strange to me, and it kind of doesn't really have that same sort of, like, like, the old one looked very, like, um, jestery, and it had, like, that big smile, and I, I don't really see that as well in, like, the new one, so that's kind of bumming me out a bit, but, I mean, we'll wait till I get it in hand, and we'll see how that actually ends up being, but... As far as the rest, they all look really cool, and I'm excited to get them. And I'm actually thinking of actually just getting, like, for the first ones I get, I'm thinking of getting Kopaka Anua. Kind of like a throwback to, like, the first ones, first Bionicles I ever got, which were the original Toamata Anua and Kopaka. So I think, you know, that'd be kind of fun. But I actually do really want to get, like, all of them, but it, it seems like it's going to be an investment as far as, like, you know, pricing goes, because... It seems like everything costs a little bit more these days as far as figure stuff go, because maybe back in the day there were, like, what? Um, I think the Nike might have been, like, 12, 15 bucks, and then past that it might have been, like, 10 bucks, lower than that? I don't really remember, but now each figure is basically $20, so that's going to be kind of, like, hard to, to price out. But, you know, I'll, I'll probably slowly get them. I probably won't buy them all at once, but... You know, I'll be excited to get them. Um, the Protectors, or Matoran, or the Taraga, or whatever they're supposed to be the new incarnation of, they look really cool, too. Like, I think, like, Matoran, or whatever. The, I think, like, the shorter, stockier versions of, like, they, they've kind of had, like, a hard sort of... They've never had their own sort of look to them, and I feel like, you know, if this is going to be the standard for, like, Villager, or whatever, let's go with Villager. That sounds good. Um then I, I'm actually pretty excited for it, so, yeah, that's cool. Now, the Lord of Skull Spiders, that's really interesting. Like, maybe they're, like, trying to go back and sort of take sort of, like, the Web of Shadows, the Viserac sort of look, because, I mean, that was really popular, and I friggin' love the Viserac. I think they're so cool, and um, if that's maybe what they're trying to capture again, like, it, it seems like it's sort of like a Viserac cross with the Borok, and in, like, the the way they're sort of doing it, and, you know, it, it definitely seems really interesting, and, like, I like those face hugger things, those seem really cool, so, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll see how, you know, they decide to go with the villains, because they haven't even really, like, we don't even know what the villains are going to be, like, that's, like, the next set that'll probably come out, and I guess we'll, we'll see where they end up going with that, but, you know, I, I hope they pick something, like, who knows what they could bring back, you know? Like, they have an entire, like, series. Like, we could maybe see, like, the Paraka, 
like or things that look like the Paraco, or we can see the Rakshi. I'm gonna guess that they might do like a Rakshi sort of thing, because you know that was really popular around this time. Or they might do, um, like who knows? Like they could pick. They have like they could pick anyone to be like their first sort of real villains, and or they could just come up with something completely brand new and original, and that would be cool too. So who knows what they'll do? You know. Now what I'm really wondering is if if they're gonna like update the Toa, uh, like the, the Toa Mata, like each generation, sort of like they were doing with Hero Factory, or if they're going to introduce, like, new Toa. And maybe not just new Toa, but, like, maybe, like, the next series they'll do is another Metru series. Like, they'll go back and do that again. Like, now that'd be really interesting, and, like, I am would be so stoked for them to do that, because, like, that's, like, you know, like I've said, like, that's my favorite series, so who knows, maybe they'll go through it again and, like, do the Metru, and then maybe have the Anika come back, but maybe they'll all be sort of, like, different takes on them, but still, like, the same sort of character names or whatever, but, like, I think that'd be really interesting, but who knows what they'll do, like, only time will tell, like, we know so little about what's happening right now, and it's so fresh and new and mysterious, which, you know, was probably the best part of Bionicle, and the fact that that's what they're going, like, what they're doing right now is, is amazing. So, my favorite, uh, Bionicle character has to be Matau, hands down. I freaking love Matau, like his character, he's sarcastic, he's kind of an asshole, but he's kind of a really lovable guy, and he has like such a character growth like throughout the two movies, and I think he's just the coolest guy ever. Like, I think when I was younger I just wanted to be like Matau, like he was so cool, and you know, I, I think as you, you know, get older in th these type of, in these days, like, a lot of the media and sort of characters that you idolize sort of affects who you kind of become and Matteo being like one of them and like I've, you know, there's a lot of stuff I like and I th I just love Matteo and I think he's so cool and if they could like do, if they do bring back the Metru, I just hope like Matteo comes back because he, he was so cool. So with Bionicle 2015 on its way, I'm going to end off this video with a question to you guys. So, uh, every, by this point you know that my favorite character was Matau, and my favorite element actually is uh, air in the Bionicle series. And actually maybe just in general, air is really cool, like obviously Wind Whirler, uh, Avatar, Last Airbender, air is my favorite element in that too, but regardless, um, I'm kind of bummed out by the fact that Liwa right now is a master of jungle, and not a master of air. It's kind of lame. Uh, I mean, it says that he has kind of a bit of control over, like, he, he talks or communes with the wind and stuff, but, I mean, un until it's actually released, I don't think that, like, I'm still going to be a little bummed out until they decide, hey, you know, uh, Liwa's actually going to be, you know, using air powers more, but I guess we'll see. I think what's really weird is that why do they make Liwa a master of jungle and not make, like, Tahu a master of volcanoes or Pohatu a master of deserts or Gali a master of oceans? Like, I think that would have been so cool, like, a cool title for them, but I don't know, it's, it's really weird and, you know, like, who knows what they're doing at the board room meetings and throwing around ideas, but, I mean, that would have been way cooler than, you know, just changing one of them, like, it just seems awkward to me, but I don't know, who knows what they'll end up doing. Like, it's still up in the air. I think if I were a Toa, I'd be a Toa Ver, of course. And I'd have uh, two katanas, kind of like Liwa, or Mato as well, you know, he's got two swords. And I'd have, much like Pohatu, uh, the Mask of Speed. Because, well, first I really like the design of his mask, and I just really like the power of, like, super speed, like, I love, like, the Flash or Quicksilver, and I think if I had superpowers, I'd have speed powers, because, I mean, that's super cool, and, and, you know, you have a low metabolism, and you don't have to, and you can eat as much as you want, and you never get fat, and that's great, <laughs> but, uh, you can also do everything fast, like, you know, homework or whatever, but, so that'd be cool, uh, yeah, so, uh, that would be me as a Toa. Now, yeah, let's hear you guys as a Toa. Uh, my question to you guys is, if you were a Toa, 
what element would you have, and what would your Toa tool be, because what's a Toa without his Toa tool, and what would be your Kanohi, uh, and your Kanohi powers. Uh, it seems like right now Bionicle 2015 doesn't really have a thing with Kanohi, except that maybe the Kanohi does like elemental powers, but originally they actually gave you the Toa like basically superpowers. And they all had their individual superpower. But regardless, uh, what elements, what your Toa tool would be, and what your Kanohi would be. So tell me in the comments, and uh, we'll have a cool little discussion about it. So uh, this is uh, Wind Whirler, and I guess I'm siding out. Uh, yeah, that's that's it.